Hi, welcome back to Emma's for Meeple. My name's Mitch, and in this series, Board Games and Blankets, I get cozy in a blanket and briefly discuss a board game. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about Moonrakers, the one to five player deck building negotiations game. So let's go. Uh oh. It's okay. I saved the board game. So in Moonrakers, you are trying to get to 10 prestige points. So there's a comic that explains that you are trying to become uh, the Moonrakers' uh, new leader. In order to do that, that's why you need to get to 10 prestige points. So you're going for 10 prestige points, and the way you get those is by completing contracts or completing objectives. So on your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either choose a contract or you can stay at base. The first option you can do is choose a contract, which you'll select a contract from the uh, contracts available on the board, and you'll look at three things on there. The bottom left is what's required to complete the contract. The bottom right is the hazard dice. Those are dice that you're going to have to roll to determine whether or not you uh, get injured to your ship. And then the other section is in the top right, and that is the rewards you get for completing it. You could form an alliance with uh, someone else in order to uh, help them com have you complete a contract. In which case you would negotiate the rewards uh, should you complete it to where if you're struggling to meet the requirements let's say it's three yellow and one purple in order to complete it which i believe are three thrusters and one one crew member which i'll get into later uh, you can negotiate with them that uh, you'll give them one of the credits from the rewards okay once you finish negotiating should you choose to negotiate with anyone to complete a contract you roll the hazard dice. And the hazard dice are just little red hazard symbols that determine whether or not your ship's going to get attacked. In order to block those, uh, you need to be playing those green shield cards. So after you roll the hazard dice, you can then attempt the contract. And attempting the contract, each player uh, you've negotiated in that's going to be helping with the contract gets to take one action. And one action means you're playing one card down. But certain cards have different effects, like reactors give you two more actions. Shields block one hazard dice, and thrusters allow you to draw more cards. But you really want to make sure you use those reactors and get uh, a few more reactors early on in the game, so that way you can take several actions when you're doing these contracts. Once all players have uh, used their actions in attempting the contract, you see if you met the requirements or you failed the requirements. If you met the requirements, divvy out the rewards as you negotiated previously, and then move on to the next step in your turn. So the next step of the game is buying cards, which is how you're going to build out your, your deck and build out your ship. So you have credits that you earn throughout the game by completing contracts and negotiating with other people. So you'll use those credits to either buy new ship parts or hire additional crew. And the crew come with special uh, abilities that sometimes uh, let them act as other cards or give you special, special abilities, special actions. So if you buy a ship part, you have four four ship uh, slots on your on your little board, so you can only own four at one time. But if you buy a fifth one, you can just discard one that you've previously owned. And ship parts give you special abilities that uh, that can do drastically different things throughout the game. And then at the end of your turn, you discard your hand and draw back up to uh, five or whatever your hand limit may be based on uh, whatever ship parts you may have. And uh, then play passes to the player uh, to your left. So we've talked about contracts. Contracts will give you a uh, prestige to move up along the tracker in order to win the game, because it's first to ten. Or you could stay at the base, which this will get you uh, secret objectives. When you stay at the base, you draw two objectives and keep one. Now these objectives always reward one prestige point when you complete them, but you keep them hidden. So all the other players don't know what you're trying to do. You could be trying to sabotage other people's missions, or you can just be trying to get uh, four blue ship parts. When, whenever you complete the, the condition of the objective, then you get that point. You have to reveal it to everyone. After you collect one of your two objectives from staying at the base, you then collect one credit, and then you can move on to the buying phase, just like you normally would. And then after you buy, you actually have the option to discard one of the contracts that are available and reveal a new one. And then, just as usual, you end your turn by discarding your hand and drawing back up to five. And that's pretty much the bulk of the game. Players take turns attempting contracts, negotiating with other players to help them with said contracts, or staying at base and collecting secret objectives that they'll complete later on in the game. Well, the first one of 10 prestige points wins, and they become the new leader of the Moonrakers faction. Now, what do I like about this game? 
I love negotiating games, negotiation games, and deck builders. So this was a perfect blend. I love the theme of of space, and it, it, it just gave me the, these feelings. One of my intro games was Munchkins, which was, had a bit of negotiations in it. So we're having this have negotiations, and, and deck building was just fantastic, to where you'll be making a deal with someone saying, I'll help you with that contract for uh, three of the five credits. And then eh, just when you thought you sealed the deal, you, some player on the other side of the table is just like, I'll, I'll do it for, for two credits, two monies. And uh, before you know it, they're shaking hands and they're going on that contract and you just got swindled. They just came in and uh, did the job for cheaper. So, I mean, but I love that about the game. But you definitely need a good player group for this because if, if people aren't, you know, very social or negotiation, uh, if you're willing to negotiate, uh, then it's it's then it's just going to be mediocre. It does play one to five. I haven't played solo. I only played it at four so far, but we we had a blast. And it comes with metal coins, which are fantastic. Uh, I I love metal coins. I love the high quality components. Even uh, it's just great. Hopefully, I described the game well enough for you. Uh, just a a quick cover because I'm covered in a blanket. If you like what you saw, click that like button down below. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Uh, subscribe. Click the notification uh, icon because we do release videos every Sunday. And you'll get notified when we, re when we release them. So my name is Mitch. Thanks for joining me. And uh, try to play more games.